Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Five Tips to Make Financial Forecasting More Efficient with Abbott Exchange. My name is Kim Fellman. I'm a Marketing Coordinator at JMT Consulting. I'll be your moderator today, and I'm excited to be hosting this session. This webinar is brought to you by JMT Consulting. We are ERP and financial management solution specialists for nonprofits, and we have nearly 30 years of experience helping nonprofits with technology and business processes for the back office. This is why we've partnered with Avid Exchange. They bring our clients a solution to help streamline their AP process, ease audit season stress, prevent fraud, and speed up approval processes and payments. We believe they're one of the best AP automation options for a nonprofit to consider for their organization. Before we kick things off today, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. First, today's webinar will be recorded and will be emailed to you for on-demand access along with the slides. Next, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have a question, please feel free to send it through the Q&A tab at the bottom of your control panel. We will have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the presentation where we will answer all of your questions. I'd like to get us started by welcoming Vanessa Curie and Terry Gren from Avid Exchange. Vanessa is a partner marketing manager and Terry is the senior channel manager at Avid Exchange. For over 30 years, Terry has been involved in the sales and support of VARs like JMT Consulting. He focuses on building and developing relationships and works with us to understand the value of automation and helping streamline a AP departments to be more efficient. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass the mic over to Terry. Terry, over to you now. Great, thank you so much, Kim. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today, uh, taking the time out of your day for a webinar. I'll try to make it not too boring. Um, I'll do my best. So let's just go ahead and jump into this. Um, the agenda today, what we're going to talk about is uh, why financial forecasting is critical to long-term success, common challenges the F FP and A teams face, five tips for building a better forecast, and how AP automation can help. And then at the end, we'll go into a Q&A session where you can ask any questions about the content that I'm um, showing today. So let's talk about um, starting with ways forecasting can help with companies. First of all, it allows you to avoid unanticipated cash flow shortages. It helps you confirm confidence in your financial position. Um, it influences budgets and establishes business goals that are both realistic and feasible. Um, it helps you ensure that those difficult management decisions that you may face are built upon solid financial figures and provide real-time benchmarking in for growth and financial health of your business. But many companies struggle to produce an accurate forecast, and a great deal is just to skip the – and some companies just skip them altogether. Why? Well, because it's because forecasting isn't exactly easy. Um, some of the challenges you may face are the elements that are core to businesses consistently evolving. Um, identifying the accounting um, for external factors may be beyond your control. Um, you may experience having constant pressure to improve your performance while reducing processing costs. Or you might find that there's a lot of time required in creating a meaningful forecast. Uh, manual process and disparate systems make data retrieval difficult or there is a disconnect from core business units that lead to lack of insights, those key drivers. So based on a study done by the Aberdeen Group in 2019, many organizations are still using spreadsheets to put forecasting plans together, uh, with at least 34% of that attributed to poor collaboration, collaboration or speaking um, across departments as a top challenge, and 31% find that process too long and resource intensive. Um, all these factors create challenges for accurate financial planning and analysis. So how can we develop more efficient and accurate forecasts? Glad you asked. Let's jump into it here. Uh, so let's look at the five actionable steps towards better forecasting. One, make it collaborative. You need to involve um, all the departments that are involved in the forecast. We can't just let it lie, uh, rely on one. 
um, identify and minimize assumptions, um, forecast for multiple scenarios, and reforecast often, as painful as that is, and try to automate that process as much as possible. So let's take a look at each one of these a little bit more in depth. So making forecast a collaborative exercise, the first step to ensure that an effective forecast is to involve other finance members and cross-functional departments. Um, finance should never um, forecast in isolation, which helps drive the outcomes and shares accountability for meeting goals. Um, gives the business partners full accountability um, to can drive their budgets and help finance teams understand what drives the outcome and share accountability for all those goals. Two, let's identify and minimize your assumptions. So any forecast requires that you make assumptions about things that are outside of your control. Uh, the best forecast limits are assumptions about external factors, but clearly identify those that must be included. Um, some of the common assumptions are market validity, fatality, uh, let's see here, uh, your competitors and their offerings, um, technological changes that might impact your business, and the overall health with your partners and through your, your supply chain, throughout your supply chain. Um, let's do this here. Sorry, it's going a little slow. All right, forecast multiple scenarios. Uh, there's a strong temptation to be optimistic when forecasting growth. I'd account of this, many entrepreneurs end up using extreme conservative estimates. In reality, neither is the only option you should forecast. Uh, you should devote your predictive energy to all those two, to at least two scenarios. One is optimistic and the other is cautious. Um, this is especially true if there's uncertainty surrounding major factors that could impact your business, such as government regulations, new competition, or even overall economic growth. Um, it can be frustrating to use multiple forecasts. It clashes with the part of your brain that is hardwired to desire certain certainty and precision. Still, it helps you maintain flexibility in your strategic planning and create more realistic expectation for your investors. So reforecast often. You should also recast, you know, forecast as often as you can. Don't just set and forget your forecast once a year. This will allow your company to better align for your budgets and improve your accuracy of your forecast. Adjust those forecasts based on present performance and developing an internal or external trend, rather than relying on what um, you or other managers predict might happen months ago. Um, pivot is needed based on the new data key. So decisions are based on what is happening now and not what's happening on your previous year. It allows you to be better aligned with budget and improve the accuracy of your forecast. So finally, automation, your process and building a scalable financial system that enables your team to focus more on analyzing data than receiving the entire or entering doesn't um, just start at the forecasting level. You should look and build it from the foundation um, because what is good is to apply an automated solution on top of a mountain of manual processes. It won't improve your overall finance team efficiency and because of some of the risks of manual processes at those lower levels, you may be forecasting off data that, is, that isn't accurate or have a hard time getting visibility. So build a scalable financial system from the ground up by eliminating unnecessary manual effort and disparate systems from processes like sending and receiving payments, collecting financial data from across the organization, um, building custom reports. So let's recap those. Collaboration, identify and minimize assumptions, forecast for multiple scenarios, reforecast often, and then automate as much of the process as you possibly can. So next, let's kind of talk about how automation can help. So the benefits of AP automation for, for financial uh, forecasting result in better cash flow visibility and control, um, having a central hub for all payment related files, anytime, anywhere access to invoices, um, custom automated workflows, and clicks away from sophisticated reports. Reducing those processing costs, eliminate the hard costs, streamline processes, uh, limit employee time on manual tasks, 
um, e-payments, rebates provided, additional revenue stream, and enhanced security. Security um, mitigates risk of costly fraud, uh, creates an automatically enforced tighter and internal controls, and reduce volume of risky paper payments. You know, everybody knows that by sending out a paper check, you're sending out all your banking information, uh, so anybody can get that check and use those numbers to create fraud. It's still um, billions and billions of dollars a year in check fraud. Um, and improve those supplier relationships. Uh, service teams assist with inquiries and ensure payments are received and applied. Um, suppliers get paid on time, every time, in their preferred method of payment. Um, so you can build a stronger relationship and lower uh, the vitality in the supply chain. So Avid Invoice. Um, Avid Invoice offers two automation solutions. Avid Invoice is for invoice processing and Avid Pay is for payment processing. Avid Invoice, let's start with this. Um, Eliminate those touch points to pay and receive money faster. So to better understand the benefits of automated accounts payable solutions, it's important to look at the similarities and the differences of the two methods before handling AP. Um, this can also help you identify bottlenecks in your own process that can be solved with automation. So here on the left, this is before automation. Um, this is accounts payable process begins when your invoice is received by the AP department. Um, invoices can arrive um, for many different methods, including electronically through email, fax, snail mail, which is the U.S. mail, um, in our office, or maybe a colleague dropped paperwork in an inbox on your desk. Uh, when an AP process, um, when AP processes are not centralized, handling of processing each and new invoice is essential and an ad hoc adventure. Um, so once those invoices are received, they're either physically handed to an AP manager or a team member or forwarded if they came in by email. Uh, next, the invoices are manually typed into an accounting system um, and can be scanned in as well to create a digital record. Uh, this is the best case scenario and it assumes an ERP um, system is in place. However, it can still offer plenty of opportunities for manual errors and typos. Um, after automation, the process is streamlined. So this is a normal process where that invoice comes in, somebody has to open that mail, route it, code it, approve it, do that manual data entry, um, select the payment type, do a bank reconciliation and follow up and then invoices filed for later research. Um, after automation, these are the what we consider to be the business pertinent decisions where you code it and approve it and select it. So we take everything out of the equation, all those manual tasks we're gonna take out of that process for you. Um, and invoices are imported in three different ways. Um, email, so we have a designated email address for suppliers that can send it to you electronically. If you are already receiving those invoices by email, we can just have that either forwarded or someone at your office can forward them to the email that we've set up for you. Um, you can scan. Um, you can scan invoices in directly to the portal, and then the good old-fashioned um, snail mail, paper mail, uh, we set up a lockbox where we get those invoices. We do a change of address to your vendors, and those invoices come to one of our two processing facilities across the country, and um, we will open that mail and scan those in electronically for you. Um, we extract all that header detail around the invoice, including the PO number, and submit it to the invoice application that gives you the ability to um, have additional workflows if needed. You can have as many approvers and as many workflows as you would like uh, that works for your business. So pending approval queue shows all the invoices that need action specific to each user. Um, this could be coding or a simple review. Um, users have easy access to all the pertinent data from the invoice number, the supplier ID and name to the amount, um, the manual approval process and paper invoices slow down payables, consume loads of accounting time um, and hours and result in missed discounts. Um, average exchange invoice makes approving invoices as simple as selecting and clicking approve in the top right corner. So the invoice detail page gives you more detail on it's um, where you code your invoices. Um, the left-hand side of the invoice details, the page shows you all that invoice header information keyed in by Avid Exchange. Um, with the invoice image on the right-hand side, 
So if there's 50 pages to an invoice, all 50 pages are going to be there. Um, and then at the bottom is where the coding takes place. Um, Average Exchange also has what we call smart coding, that if an invoice always comes in from the same supplier, um, it's coded the same way, the system learns that and it will automatically code that for you. Um, that is a, a feature that you can either have turned on or turned off if you want to have that control and code things how you want to. You can do either or. Um, you also have the default um, GL when you receive an invoice from a sp specific supplier. 100% um, of that amount will pre-populate to a specific account code. Um, you can use previous, remember how the invoice was previously coded. You also have a tool to go in here and look at any invoices that have come in from this particular supplier. So if you forget how it was coded last time or allocated, um, you can pull up all of those invoices in the Avid portal and be able to review those and, and see how you paid them in the past or how you approved them or coded them in the past. Uh, we also have a history tab, which keeps track of everyone who has touched that invoice and what's um, been coded or worked on. If there needs to be um, an ad hoc approver, it's where you need to send this out of it. It's traditional workflow and have somebody else take a look at it. This history file will keep all of that. Um, we always make a joke, be careful what you say in here because it's permanent, so you can't say anything bad about a coworker um, because it's going to be permanently stored in that history file and you cannot delete it. So let's talk about um, Avid Pay. Um, the Avid Pay network, this is how it works. Um, the Avid Exchange Pay is a full service offering, which includes intuitive software, which gives you and your team control over payment approvals and full visibility into all of your payments. Um, Avid Exchange also provides a service component uh, to help reduce manual tasks that can take up a lot of your accounting staff's time. Um, it all starts with reviewing your accounting system and selecting those payments that you're ready to make on the network. Um, you're going to use that same cash decision process you would today. Uh, for those organizations that have check signers or dual signers, depending on the amount, you can go ahead and set those workflows up to review all payments before the funds withdraw. Um, request is submitted and we start paying the, the payment process. Um, money is going to be pulled from your bank account. And there are three ways that supplier can get paid. Um, I can jump into more detail in the next slide, but um, after the payment has been made and been sent to the supplier for those technical capabilities of financial relationships, your team can see full visibility into the status of those payments, um, that the supplier has applied for that payment. Um, if the check has not been cashed yet, every payment that you send through the network is has pause pay included in it. So our team follows up on it. So you don't have to worry about that any longer. All you have to do is send those payments to the Avid Pay network. We're going to facilitate making those payments for you, and we're going to make sure that those funds are collected. If not, our team is going to reach out to those suppliers or vendors and find out why. Did they move? Was it lost in the mail? Um, there was electronic funds, why you didn't collect those funds? Um, and we'll work with them to make sure that they get paid. If we cannot reach them, you know, maybe they went out of business or whatever is the case, we'll reach out to you and say, hey, we're trying to make a payment to your supplier. They haven't cashed that check. Their phone number's not working. We're not getting any callbacks. What would you like to do? So we, we have a team that ensures that your vendors are going to get paid on time, every time, and that um, there is no fraud, um, and we're going to follow up on all those payments. Um, also, we have that, um, well, we talked about the service team for the first 30 days. Um, we'll, um, we can talk more uh, about the funds and how they get transferred here. Um, the accounting system transfers those payments. The payment data uh, moves over to Avid Pay. We do Avid Pay Pay Control. Money is pulled from your existing bank account. And then however it's set up for them to receive those funds, it can either be by MasterCard, which is a virtual card. It's a one-time issued number for that exact amount to that exact vendor. So they can't change the amount or change the payee. Um, our Avid Pay Direct is the Avid Exchange version of a um, direct deposit or ACH, uh, where we include a, an enriched um, remittance form so they know exactly what it was paid for. I'm sure everybody in the past has sent out an ACH payment and somebody will call and say, what is this for? We need more detail. Um, and if you put that in the mail, that's gonna show up a week after you've already made them the payment and then the good old fashioned check. And then at the end, it's the client reconciliation.
All right. I kind of went through that a little fast, so I apologize. But if anybody has any questions, we'd like to open that up now. Great. Thank you, Terry. So if you have a question for Terry, you can submit it through the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Thank you, Terry and Kimberly. It looks like we do have a couple of questions that have come up. The first one is, can I send all of my vendor payments through Avid Exchange Pay? Great question, yes. Avid Exchange purposes to accommodate all of your vendor payments. Um, only payments that you select to be paid by Avid Exchange will be facilitated. Um, the examples of those payments of you, that your corporation might ultimately want to retain um, and execute themselves are the payments related to employee reimbursements or wire payments, inter-office or inter-company reimbursements, dividends to shareholders or cross-border payments, um, and employee payroll. Everything else you can send to Avid Exchange. Excellent. Another question has popped up. Um, can I still print checks? Absolutely. We understand that there's times that you still need to print a check in-house. So we offer a self-managed payment option that enables you to print on uh, blank check stock, micro checks is what they call that. Um, so that uh, it's more secure than having that pre-printed check stock laying around your office. Okay, thank you. What if we need to send a copy of the invoice or other information with the payment? Can we do that? Yeah, you can always print that invoice out because um, it's electronic. So you can print out a copy and attach that to the payment as you, if you need to send it out. Yeah, there's situations where that always needs to happen. So absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, we have another question. Will my invoice approval process need to change? So that's a, it's up to you. If you have a current process that works, um, we will work with you to set up in the system the way you want it to work. Um, but this might be an opportunity to improve the existing process. So if there's no need to change, we can mimic the approval process. Um, but our team has, has done this so many times and they've seen how people do it and they might see a way that might work better for you. It's not something we're gonna force on you, but we're just gonna let you know this might be a better way but in the end it's up to you you can decide how those workflows go okay perfect i don't see any additional questions in the question box but if anyone has an additional question please feel free to enter it and we will try to get it answered for you Great. okay we have another question what if we decided to take back our AP processing in-house after five years? Would we have access to our invoice history to keep? Heavens no, I'm just kidding, of course. Yeah, if you decide to leave Avid Exchange, we will put that, all your invoices on a, on a DVD and send those to you. Um, we, we understand that everybody you know, might need to change or pull it back in-house. So we want to accommodate everybody, but yeah, we will put that on a DVD for you and send it to you so you have all those invoice copies. Okay, thank you. It looks like that's all the questions we have in the queue at the moment. We do have a little more time if there's any additional questions. Definitely, um, we can give it a, you know, 30 seconds or so and See if anyone has a last minute question for Terry. No need to be shy. And if it's about baseball, football, or basketball, I'm here for you. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to just be about AP automation. Okay, well, I don't think that any um, additional questions are going to come through for you, Terry. Thank you. Um, so thank you all for joining JMT Consulting and Avid Exchange for this webinar today. I would like to thank Terry for your time and we hope you all enjoyed the presentation and learned something. We'd love for you to join us at future events and webinars also, which you can find um, all of our upcoming webinars by visiting us at jmtconsulting.com and clicking on the training and events tab. So this will conclude our webinar unless Terry or Vanessa have something to add. 
Morning. I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us today, taking time out of your day. Um, hopefully it was informative. Um, and if you do have any questions, please reach out to your JMT representative and um, we'll get those answered for you. If you would like to see any type of a demo or um, you know, anything more in depth, we can set that up for you as well. So I appreciate everybody's time and uh, have a great day. Yes, have a great day. Thank you.